Today, we're going to learn how to customize the WooCommerce checkout page. So this is the default checkout page that you get with WooCommerce. I think by default, it's way too long. It looks a bit messy. This is one I've been working on. So I've been able to really simplify this down, give a much better user experience. So I'll show you how to rename fields, how to move fields around, even generate custom fields like I've got down here, a how did you find us field, but you'll be able to have full control over your WooCommerce checkout page by the end of this tutorial. So if this sounds interesting, then keep watching. All right, so when you first start out with WooCommerce, you'll get a checkout page that looks something like this. The default checkout page is pretty long. There's a lot of fields and a lot of text that the user needs to fill in. It can be a little bit overkill, a bit overwhelming for some users. If we simplify this checkout down, we will actually improve our sales conversion rate just by making less work for the user and making it look a little bit neater as well. So let's get started doing that. All right, so by default, WooCommerce does give us some ability to customize this page. If we go to our theme customizer, we can go to WooCommerce here and they've got given us a few things. Checkout is one of them. And we can do a few things, but not a whole lot, not very deep customizability here. Uh, for example, we could just remove that little red asterisk and and some of the fields, we can hide them if we want. You can like hide the company field, for example. That's pretty common on a lot of pages. You don't need the company field, for example. But not a whole lot we can do. What we can do is use a plugin and we can do some very uh, deep customization of this field. So let's get started doing that. Um, so now if I reload this page, we'll see the first thing we did was get rid of that little red star. But what I'll do now is add a plugin. So if we go to plugins and go to add new, if you search for checkout, there's this one called Checkout Field Editor. Now this is a very popular, 300,000 active installs, all pretty much five star reviews. So if we install and activate that one, we've got a lot more options we can do when it comes to customizing our checkout. What we'll notice here is now under WooCommerce, we've got an option called Checkout Form. So let's click that. So this is what our plugin looks like. Now it looks a little bit daunting for those of you who aren't that technically inclined, but you can basically see first name, last name, company name, country, street address, this all, lines up in the order that the fields appear here. So first name, last name, company name, country. You can see that follows down this order. We can edit these and we can actually remove them if we want as well. So let's start with doing that. Now for this example, let's just try removing a bunch of fields. So imagine if this was a local store and you don't ship internationally, there's a bunch of things you could probably remove straight away. So if you're not dealing company to company, you could probably remove that one. Um, if you're not shipping internationally, you could remove the country there. Uh, street address, a lot of countries don't use two lines. You only need the first line for the street address. And uh, you may or may not want the phone number. This additional information can be added or removed as well. So let's look at doing all these kind of things. So back in our plugin under WooCommerce checkout form, let's just remove a few things. So let's remove the company, the country, the second line of the billing address. So that's uh, the billing address number two. And uh, let's remove the phone number as well there. So let's go click remove. That'll highlight them. And then we click save changes. All right, so after hitting reload on our browser, this is what it looks like now. So we've simplified it down quite a lot already. We can see the country and the company is gone. We still have this state slash county. Um, so in Australia, we wouldn't refer to county as well. So I might actually show us how to uh, customize, edit these names. And now it's probably also a good time to point out that the actual list, the drop down list is derived from your WooCommerce settings. So if you go to WooCommerce settings, I've got mine set to Australia here and the default customer location is linked to the shop base address. There's other ways to link it, um, but if you change that country there, that will actually change the list of states available on there by default as well. Now, obviously, if you're doing international shipping, you would have left the country one still available and then they can change the state to link to any country that's from the country drop down field as well. So I'm going to assume that this is just for one country and I'm just going to do Australia for this example. So let's head back to our plugin. And the first thing I wanted to do there was with the state. I just wanted to call it state. I'll delete the county there as well. There we go. The other thing I might do is customize that name, town slash city. In Australia, we just refer to it as a suburb when we're doing postage. So I'll put suburb there instead. But you can see you customize these labels as you like. Now, if I go ahead and reload this, we can see that we've got our new labels here. So you can label things and you can even add your own uh, fields here as well. So let's say we want to add a custom field here. So let's add a field. 
and you could add anything you want here. So let's say we wanted to add, say, a nickname to this uh, field. So I could put nickname, and I'll label it nickname, nickname, and we could put a placeholder there. I'll call that nickname as well, and just save that on. There we go. Now if we reload here, uh, we'll see down the bottom we've got nickname. So back in here, we can actually change the order. If we want, we could just grab that little uh, hamburger thing and just drag it wherever we want it to appear. We probably want it to appear after the last name. And let's save the changes there. And we can see that we've got that new location there. So it looks pretty good. The one thing that's not on the plugin list by default is that additional information. If we go back to the editor, you click on the additional fields there and that has uh, special notes. If you don't want that to appear, you can go ahead and remove that as well. That's pretty easy. If I remove that, it neatens that up a little bit more too. So it's starting to look pretty good. Uh, I might just remove that nickname. That was an example of adding a text field, but what we can do, I might remove that one. Let's try adding a different kind of field. So I'm going to remove that one. There we go. And we can add another field. So we're not limited to just text fields. The free version gives us a bunch of different uh, kinds of fields. So we can do a selection and a radio. Those are fairly interesting ones. So I might do a selection one here. Let's call it, let's say it's one of those surveys. How did you find out about us? So I'm going to call it, uh, how did you find out about us? So how did you find us? I've already typed this in before previously. How did you find us? Um, I'm going to put in a few options here. So we've got options value. So usually we've got things like, uh, like Google search, uh, I'll put Google there. You could put, uh, maybe um, Facebook ad or Facebook, just put Facebook maybe, you get the idea, um, add one in, maybe just word of mouth or word of mouth or f maybe just say uh, from a friend. There we go. If we put that in there, now we've got a new field there. How did you find us? If we save that in and reload it, we've got a new field down there. How did you find us? They can choose. Now, the one thing I might change here is this one has a placeholder. The other ones don't have placeholders. So you might want to be a bit more consistent about which ones do and which ones don't. That's totally up to you. Uh, for example, the placeholder there is just by itself. We could go there and we could just remove that placeholder. That would make it look more neat. If I go ahead and reload that. Now they're all blank. So you can leave them blank or you can actually pre-fill them in, put examples in depending on what you're asking from the user. The other way to design it is maybe not even use labels, use the placeholders instead of labels. That can look good as well. That's a very popular design choice. So for the names, we could just go, instead of having the label as the first name, let's let's move that to the placeholder. Um, so I've just copied and pasted it there. Same with the last name, let's do that. Like this can actually look even more neat than what it was. So street address, same thing, we'll do that. Just move it as a placeholder. And then if we I reload this, you can sort of get the idea. You can say first name, last name. This actually looks a bit neater because it reduces the number of lines on the form and it makes it look more compact. I might actually repeat that for suburb and probably postcode as well. Let's do that. Um, so postcode is there. So rather than the postcode slash zip, just choose the one that applies for your case. So I'm going to delete zip because we don't use that in Australia, for example. So uh, label is postcode. Let's make the placeholder postcode. There we go. And email address, I could do the same thing there as well. Doesn't need a label if we put that in the placeholder. There we go. Let's reload and see what we've got. So again, this is looking a little bit more compact, a little bit tidier. So I quite I quite like this setup. Just realized I forgot to do post, ah, suburb. Suburb is, uh, there we go. Let's do that. And if I reload. Very nice. Now this is a much neater looking form than the default one. I think we can agree. So by this point, you should have enough uh, understanding of how this works. You can go in and customize this and get that how you want that to look and just play around with it. Don't worry if you mess anything up. They've got a reset to default here where you can just go back to the default setup anytime you want. So there's no risk of messing this up. They've got a uh, reset switch there. Very nice if you need to use that. Now this tutorial was all about the checkout. If you're interested in the cart as well, what I like to do with the cart is use a plugin called WooCommerce Blocks and it upgrades the cart. It makes it look a little bit nicer like we've got here. If you want your cart to look a little bit more like this one rather than the default, check out my previous tutorial. I'll put that up on the screen here. I'll put a link in the description as well. So check that one out as well. WooCommerce Blocks gives a much nicer looking cart. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.